No. You okay, Mike? Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A lot of my friends, but you have been so helpful there. I appreciate it. You have been really, really. And we did well. The election, uh, we, it came out really well. Next time, we'll triple it up or quadruple it, right? That's right. And we want to get over 51, right? At least 51. Uh, well, this is Black History Month, so this is our little breakfast, our little get together. Hi, Lynn. How are Hi, you? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. And just a few notes. Uh, during this month, we honor the tremendous history of the African Americans throughout our country, throughout the world, if you really think about it, right? And uh, this story is one of unimaginable sacrifice, hard work, and faith in America. Uh, I've gotten a real glimpse during the campaign. I'd go around with Ben to a lot of different places that I wasn't so familiar with. They're incredible people. Absolutely. And I want to thank Ben Carson, who's going to be heading up HUD. That's a big job. <laughs> and it's a job that's not only housing, it's mind and spirit, right? Ben? Ben. And you understand it. Nobody's going to be better than Ben. Last month, we celebrated the life of the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr., whose incredible example is unique in American history. You read all about Dr. Martin Luther King uh, a week ago when uh, somebody said, I took the statue out of my office. And it turned out that that was fake news. <laughs> fake news. The statue was cherished. It's, it's one of the favorite things in the and we have some good ones. We have Lincoln, and we have Jefferson, and we have Dr. Martin Luther King, and we have other. But they said the, uh, the statue, the bust of Dr. Martin Luther King was taken out of the office. And uh, it was uh, never even touched. So I think it was a disgrace, but that's the way the press is. Very unfortunate. Uh, I am very proud now that we have a museum in the National Mall where people can learn about Reverend King, so many other things. Frederick Doug Douglass is an example of somebody who's done an amazing job and is being recognized more and more, I notice. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, and millions more black Americans who made America what it is today. Big impact. I'm proud to honor this heritage, and we'll be honoring it more and more. The folks at the table, in almost all cases, have been great friends and supporters. and. Uh, Daryl, I met Daryl when he was defending me on television. <laughs> and the people that were on the other side of the argument didn't have a chance, right? That's right. And Paris has done a, an amazing job in a very hostile CNN community. <laughs> he's, done, he's all by himself. And he'll have seven people in Paris. And I'll, I'll take Paris up in a second. <laughs> but I don't watch CNN, so I don't get to see you as much as I do. I don't like watching fake news. No, none of us watch TV uh, anymore. <laughs> so, but uh, Fox has treated me very nice wherever Fox is. Thank you. Uh, we're going to need better schools, and we need them soon. We need more jobs. We need better wages, a lot better wages. We're going to work very hard in the inner city. Ben's going to be doing that. Big league. Big time. It's one of his big, big things that we're going to be looking at. And we need safer communities, and we're going to do that with law enforcement. We're going to make it safe. We're going to make it much better than it is right now. Right now, it's terrible. And uh, I saw you talking about it the other night, Paris, on something else that was really — you did a fantastic job the other night on, on a very unrelated show. Uh, I'm ready to do my part. That's the only time I can see you. I'm ready to do my part. And I, I will say this. We're going to work together. Uh, this is a great group. This is a, a group that's been so special to me. You really helped me a lot. If you remember, I wasn't going to do well with the African-American community. And after they heard me speaking and talking about the inner city and lots of other things, we ended up getting — I won't go into the details, but we ended up getting substantially more than other candidates who had run in the past years. Almost and now we're going to take that to uh, new levels. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my television star over here. <laughs> Amaros is actually a very nice person. Nobody knows that. But <laughs> I don't want to destroy her reputation. But she is a very good person, and she's been helpful right from the beginning with the campaign. And I appreciate it. I really do. Very special. And so I want to thank everybody for being here. Could we maybe just go around the room and we'll introduce ourselves, and the press can stay for that. And. I'm sure they have no questions about last night because it was such a good launch. We have a fantastic, hopefully, new justice of the Supreme Court, and hopefully that'll be 
He'll be approved very, very quickly. He's outstanding in every way. Academically, he's done almost as well as you did, Daryl, in college. <laughs> Not quite, right? But he, uh, he's a great, a great man. I think he'll be a great, great justice, and he's being very well received. It was a big evening, very big evening. So, Paris, why don't we start with you? Go ahead. Pleasure to be here, Mr. President. Honored to be here. Paris Donard, I'm at Thurgood Marshall College Fund, who represents the 47 publicly supported historically black colleges and universities, which I know you are very much in support of. So it's a pleasure to be here. Sir. Well, I'm glad you're in support of me because uh, I'd be all, I'd be in the wilderness without you, Paris. <laughs> you, just, you are so effective. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bill Cleveland, retired Capitol Police officer, former vice mayor of the city of Alexandria, and substitute teacher in Alexandria School System. Glad to be here. With Thank you, you sir. Thank you, Bill. And Bill's also a Vietnam veteran, sir. Oh, and, good. And, uh, I'm, I'm Earl Matthew, sir. I work for you at the Department of Defense. I was sworn in an hour right. after, you, after you were. <laughs> so I'm a, also a veteran, a longtime supporter of yours. I worked for you since late summer. And I'm happy to be here, Lieutenant sir. Lieutenant Colonel, good job. Yes, sir. It's a good job. Oh, our vice president, I'm we know our vice president. <laughs> 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 I'm like, you're next. Now, Belinda Scott, um, Daryl's wife, New Spirit Revival Center um, from Cleveland, Ohio, pastor of New Spirit, great amount of support in the uh, African American community where we are. Um, we love the Lord, we love our new president, and we are praying for our president on a regular basis. So that's what Thanks, we do. You know, the one thing I didn't understand about Belinda, I thought they were married maybe five or six years, because look how they look so young. <laughs> Should you say how many years you've been married? 35? Been together 38. 30, been together 38. But, but in the no, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 35 years. 33, three of the 38 under the blood. That's <laughs> it's actually amazing. I would have But can I say this? I'm so grateful that our president gives us an ear, you know, you to listen to the community, to listen. And, and, and people like like us are just here to constantly put that message out into the community. Thank you. And we, we love so you nice. for that. We love you for listening and we thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Daryl Scott, Pastor, New Spirit Revival Center, and Black Trump supporter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of the community, let me just say this real quick. I'm Rose, I told you I'm going to try to throw it in. I was recently oh. contacted by some of the top gang thugs in Chicago for a sit down. They reached out to me because they associated me with you. They respect you. They, they, they believe in what you're doing. And they want to have a sit down about lowering that body count. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going in Chicago. That's a great idea because Take Chicago out. is totally out of control. Well, I let them know. I said, we got to lower that body yeah. count. We don't want to talk about anything else. Get that body count down. And they agreed that the principals that can do it, these are guys straight from the streets, no politicians, straight street guys. But they're going to commit that if they lower that body count, we'll come in and we'll do some social programs. So they're in the well, if they're not going to solve the problem, and what you're doing is the right thing, then we're going to solve the problem yeah. for them because we're going to have to do something about Chicago because what's happening in Chicago should not be happening in this country. But they want to work with this administration. Good. They want to. They reached out. I didn't reach out to them. They reached out to me. Great. They want to work with this I administration. They believe in this administration. They didn't believe in the prior administration. They told me this out of their mouth. Right, good. But they see hope with me. I love that. Um, Mr. President, I'm a member of the, the, what we call the media, where we try to be fair <laughs> and objective. Uh, not all media um, seems to be the opposition party. There are those that seem good that you do, and we reported. I'm just honored to have a seat at the table today. Thank you, Mr. President. And it is. I mean, a lot of the media is actually the opposition party. They're so uh, biased, and really, it's a disgrace. Some of the media is fantastic and fair, but. So much of the media is opposition party, uh, knowingly saying incorrect things. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sad situation, but uh, we seem to be doing well. You know, it's almost like, in the meantime, we won. <laughs> so maybe they don't have the influence, they think. But they really are. They really have to straighten out their act. They're very dishonest people. James? Pastor James Davis, uh, we've been a, Mr. President, we've been a supporter of yours from the beginning. Uh, alongside uh, Mr. Michael Cohen and, and Dr. Daryl Scott with the National Diversity Coalition helped to bring out a, a huge number in the black community with respect to uh, the vote, and we're still happy to be in support Thank as you. we go forward. You've been great. Thank you, James. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Lynn, we know Hi, all Mr. Also. President. <laughs> yes, Lynn, I am, as Lynn. you know, the former vice president of the wonderful charity that your son founded, right. the Eric Trump Foundation. I've been with your family for about eight years now, right, Jared? 
And I will, I was a RNC speaker, and I will be landing with uh, Dr. Carson at HUD well, as one of the senior advisors yeah. and uh, oh. director of the Office of Public Liaison. That's great. That's Thank great, you. man. You did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, my name is Gerard Robinson. I'm a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and I was proud to be the uh, leader of the education policy team for Trump. Uh, transition. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We have uh, Ashley Bell behind you. Some others. Ashley, still here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, good to be with you. I'm Ashley Bell, Gainesville. Uh, Chairman Priebus called me out of my little town to come help run African American Outreach for your campaign. I'm glad to support Almarosa. Glad to be here, and I'll be appointed uh, to help you out at the State Department. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tucker was a start at the inauguration. I'm Tucker Davis. Yeah, I uh, ran your campaign in West Virginia. Working for you in the we did well in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> coal miners love you. Uh, we love the coal miners too. We're gonna put them back to work. Absolutely. Amen. Leo Lavelle, I was at the RNC and also at PIC, and um, I helped launch the video series every week, um, the midweek message that reached out to millennials and college students and helped launch the college Republican chapter at Howard University. Great job. Howard University. Good, great. I heard that. Good job. That's Bruce Lavelle's daughter. We snagged her. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, good. Great job. Thank you. Mr. President, Monica Alexander, uh, Executive Administrative Assistant in the Office of Public Liaison, support of Omarosa. Good. Thank you. That's nice. Mr. President, Jerron Smith, I'm with the Domestic Policy Council, Andrew Grimberg's team, and I'll be uh, focusing on urban affairs and revitalization. So, uh, all Fantastic. the policy. Fantastic. And Howard graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Howard graduate. Good job. All right. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just one second. We'll let the press clear. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, you're getting tougher. Look at you. She is. She's a champion. Yeah. No, no, no. Her and Sarah Huckabee, sir. Who's the new student? Sarah's the student. Who's the next student? That's all right. That's all right. I just didn't move this. It was kind of crazy.